Okay, this is the last installment in the video series on electron configurations. And here we are going to talk about the electron configurations of main group ions and also of excited states. Okay, so the first topic is the uh, main group ions. We're going to stick with oxygen as our example. Um, this should be familiar to you by now. Oxygen has two electrons in a helium core, and then it's got two electrons in a 2s orbital and four electrons in the 2p orbital of the valence shell. So we write it as helium 2s2 2p4 in standard notation. If we now consider making that the oxide ion, we're going to add two electrons, right? Remember that oxide is the only ion that we expect to find of oxygen in compounds, O2 minus. So we've added two electrons and that, according to the nearest noble gas rule, is what we would expect. It's two columns away from the noble gases, so that means we need to get minus two. And so now you see what actually happens is that we've added those two electrons to pair in these two vacancies in the valence shell, in the 2p valence shell. So now we have everything filled and it has exactly the same electron configuration as neon. So that is why, remember that's a very stable configuration and it is the the oxygen being able to attain that configuration by adding two electrons that makes O2 minus the correct charge and the only charge that we really find on oxygen um, when it's in chemical compounds. So we can write that this way as uh, helium 2s2 2p6 but of course that's just neon so we can write that as neon as well. The same thing is true of positive ions. If we consider sodium, remember sodium is a neon core with one electron in the 3s orbital. And of course it makes a plus one ion, you certainly know that by now, which means that it loses that outermost valence electron in the 3s shell, and it just attains the configuration of neon. So both oxide and sodium ion have the same uh, electron configuration, which is that of neon. This is a general pattern that you're going to find for all the main group elements, which remember are now the S block and the P block. So this is a good time to pause the video and just reflect on the, um, the, the elements that you know the charges for in the main group and verify that you understand why those represent the um, electron configuration of a noble gas. Okay, the next topic is excited state electron configurations. If we start with helium, helium's a, a very simple example, and the ground state of helium has two electrons in the 1s shell. Okay, and so that's the ground state. There's only ever one ground state, and anything we do to change that configuration is necessarily going to create an excited state. For example, we could take one of those 1s electrons, and we could promote it into the 2s shell. And so here you can see that configuration, which we've uh, written in red text to denote that it's an excited state. Okay, excited states are always higher in energy. It doesn't matter which orbital we pick to promote that electron into. For example, we could promote it into a 3p orbital. That's going to be a little bit higher in energy, but it's still an excited state. Anything that's not the ground state is going to be an excited state. If we move on and we can do oxygen, this is the familiar uh, electron configuration for oxygen, and so we can create an excited state by promoting one of the p orbitals into the 3s orbital, or we could promote one of the s electrons into the 2p orbital. Both of these are different from the ground state, which means they're going to be higher energy and they're going to be excited states. Okay, I want you to pause the video now and try to identify each of these elements and say whether or not the electron configuration that's given is an excited state or the ground state. Uh, one thing to point out is that the total number of electrons along with the nearest noble gas always identifies the element. So that's your key on figuring out which one it is and then you have to figure out if that's the ground state configuration or not. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to do that. 
Okay, um, hopefully you're able to do that. Let's see uh, how you did. The first one is argon, and then there's two electrons after argon. So if we find argon, that's element 18, and adding two electrons would get us to element 20. That's got to be calcium. And so normally we would expect that calcium has two electrons in the 4s shell. So this looks like it's got to be an excited state of calcium. And there we go. So that's an excited state of calcium. Okay, moving on to the next one. We can see that in this case we have krypton, which is here, and then we've added, it looks like, 12 electrons past krypton, which would take us to cadmium. 36 plus 12 is 48. So cadmium is a d-block element. So the fact that it's got a p electron here probably means an excited state. We would normally expect that cadmium would have a uh, krypton with five, uh, two electrons in the 5s shell and then all 10 electrons filled into the 4d shell. So indeed that is an excited state of cadmium with uh, one of the d electrons promoted into the 5p shell that's normally empty in cadmium. Okay, let's take a look at the last example. So for this last example, we're starting with xenon, and we've got a whole bunch more electrons here. It looks like there's 25 additional electrons, so 54 and 25 takes us to 79, which is gold. Okay, but now gold is in the uh, um, group 11, which means that this actually represents its ground state. If you remember from the last video, when you have something that's in group 6 or group 11 that wants to be naturally a D4 or a D9 configuration, we have to do that promotion of one of the S orbital electrons into the D shell. So in this case, it's totally filled. If it were in group 6, you would do a promotion so that you would attain that stable half-filled configuration. Okay, so um, those are some examples. Uh, I would uh, ask you to now go to the discussion assignments paired with this video and um, see if you can answer the questions related to this material.